So it's Thursday. Worked out this morning. Uh, had some lunch. Been hanging out. And uh, we were going to go work out. Me and Jordan were going to go work out. And then Jordan decides to turn off the lights. Take a little 20 minute nap. That was like at 4 o'clock. Now it's a quarter after 6. It's not a uh, real good strategy when you're trying to adjust to the time zone over here. So if you take too long of a nap during the day, then at night it's harder to fall asleep. And Jordan's still asleep. Look at this guy. Look. Jordan is asleep. It's important. Part of the training. <laughs> you gotta be asleep. Just do it. Ignored the function. Oh. <laughs> oh. I thought you were getting up after 20 minutes. What happened? My arm. My arm was perfect. So what happened? I realized that uh, I also need to catch up on sleep. Uh. <laughs> Sure, I need to get down to weight and so on, but I need to sleep. Likely story. I really hope I can sleep tonight. I think I'll be able to. I brought enough sleeping pills. Tylenol PM is the way I go. It'll help me fall asleep and stay asleep, but oh man, that was too long. Too long. It's like quarter after six. But the thing is, naps when you come overseas, when you travel across all those time zones, it's they're the best naps ever. They feel so good, but they just they're just not. They're, I don't think they're that good for you if you're trying to adjust quickly to the time zone. But man, they feel so good. They're so hard to just get up from. And then now it's time to get up and go work out. Go do some business. This is the gym we got going on here. We got some cardio equipment, weights, this is some serious training. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the city after this, I think. Otherwise, we're not going to sleep at all tonight. This is Jordan. It's all Jordan's fault. It's his fault I slept for two hours. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this Cybex thing. It's like a, it's like a fancy gazelle by Tony Little. If you've ever seen his infomercials, except this one looks a lot heavier duty. You're gonna get a great workout in 15 minutes or less. What should I say? Huh. I'm in the sauna now. Somebody's super soft. Look, I, it's all. Fu I can't. Way to go. You can't even see anything because of the water. Well, it steams up my camera. Unbelievable. Here. No, Where'd you go? Say. We're in a sauna. <laughs> we're in a sauna. <laughs> Justin's upset that it's steaming <laughs> and we're in a sauna. It's hot. Well, it's ridiculous. It's great, is what it is. We're just going to get hope, a few. Hope it doesn't ruin my camera. A few droplets of sweat going. If it does ruin your camera, whose fault is that? <sighs> it's probably mine. But yeah, this is it's probably the least favorite part of the, well, I, I like sitting in the sauna sometimes. I like being in here as long as I don't have to be in here. Does that make sense? So I can handle it as long as I don't have to cut weight in here. I hate sitting in the sauna to cut weight. I'd rather just exercise it off, just work it off and sweat. But uh, sauna, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stories about the sauna. I remember in college before the saunas were outlawed. We'd sit in the sauna and we'd all have to be quiet before we could get out. And there was always somebody that would say something, so we'd be sitting in the sauna forever. It was supposed to be a mental toughness. I don't know. I don't know if it made... I always cracked. I never liked it. I don't know if it made me any tougher. Oh, maybe, I think maybe that's why I hate the sauna. It's because I just, there was this point in my life where I couldn't get out on my own, you know. But uh, we're going to do some short goes in here and uh, just sweat. Just That's a manly thing to do, just sit in a box and sweat. It's very manly. Very manly. That's why I'm drawn to it. 
It's so masculine. That's why. Sometimes the song comes and fun. finds me. It's so manly. Yeah, it finds Jordan. The song that chases him down the hot box. It's because he's fat. He's so heavy all the Listen, time. Justin was getting called a fat kid earlier today. People were so making fun of me. Take it out, people. People were making fun of me. They're like, I'm just "When you're done wrestling, you're gonna be so fat." And so I put a survey on Facebook. You can, if you're friends with me. He eats six thousand calories a day. You can you can take the survey. The survey is basically like, "Do you think I'm gonna be really fat when I'm done wrestling?" Because I eat so much. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll change my calorie intake. Just because I've taken time off of wrestling twice before. Two years and then one year. <laughs> it ballooned up. And I, my weight's ballooned. I don't think, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen the third time. I think I'll be in control. I think I've learned from the first two. Your wife will kick your butt if you get too fat. I know. My She'll wife work you into shape. She'll make me in going to the gym. She's pretty hardcore about the gym now, so I think I'm going to have to be hardcore about the gym for the rest of my life, which is fine. It's a good thing. Keep me healthy for a long time. Even though there's rigs out here, I could just watch the water, the watch the waves come in and out all day long. I need to move somewhere by a beach someday. This is an area right next to our hotel. A uh, beach. We got these little tiki coverings that are apparently need some work. <laughs> I think the the slide is pretty interesting. It looks like a water slide. With no, with no, with no water. It's like you can slide right into a pile of trash at the bottom. That's pretty, pretty interesting. So me and Jordan, we're gonna try to make it downtown again, back to the Fountain Square, because Jordan wasn't very interesting in his videos yesterday. So he wanted to go reshoot all these videos. So we, we had uh, had it all lined up. Baku. What's that? Both, and I just wanted to go back down there. Yeah. See what else is going on. Yeah. I understand. Sometimes it's hard. Justin intentionally missed the bus. <laughs> I didn't miss the bus on purpose. So anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I can understand. Sometimes it's hard to be interesting. When you're doing this to so be walking downtown and be like this is a statue and you know nothing about it or this is a square a town square and I you have no idea about it so we're trying to be a little more interesting so we were gonna go downtown and and he was gonna be a little more animated a little more excited to be there it was gonna be awesome but we ended up missing the bus because because it didn't, uh, it didn't drive past where we thought it was going to be, so we missed it. All right, I'll film you. Let's see you do it. I'll even film you with your camera. I hope I avoid the trash. No, you definitely slide into the trash. I doubt there's needles. You'll be okay. Okay. Oh, he's sprinting up that. This is Jordan Holm. He's gonna slide down this slide. Right into the water. <laughs> I guess we'll find out pretty soon. Should I go belly first or just uh, try jeans on? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite a plunge right here too. I can definitely, Here, let me. Definitely get hurt doing this. This is yeah, especially there's a pitchfork at the bottom. <laughs> Come on, plunge right into the garbage. It's the worst slide. I need to slide ever. You were like, it's all wet up there too. I got like a streak there. Yeah, you streaked it. Way to go. Yeah. Cheeks are plenty because it's just two lines. Yeah. But look, there's a pitchfork right at the bottom. You see that? My grandpa would be very disappointed in safety. Yeah. There's a pitchfork at the bottom of the slide with trash. Really ill-placed slide. Good job, Man, Jordan. I want to track down that lifeguard boat. So we're on a different beach now, the one right next to it. We had to go around that wall right by the water. If you can see, we're a little closer to that other rig over there. And I think I actually came here 
I think I actually came here when I was here in Baku four years ago. It looks the same. <laughs> and uh, it's another beach. A little nicer than the other one. See, they got little. They got some better canopies. More people are actually swimming. <coughs> what do you think, Jordan? Oh. What do we think? I'm thinking being a redhead and I John's got to be a pretty unique thing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that guy feels about it, but it's gotta be rough. <laughs> Which guy? The redhead guy. The redhead guy? Oh, I don't... I bet he, I bet he doesn't even live here. He's probably a tourist. Yeah, he's definitely a tourist. Definitely a tourist. Here's the entertainment. We're at another hotel right now. We walked around that wall to get to this beach and then... Uh, we were walking by all the waiters and stuff, and they were looking at us funny. So we went to the bar and got some sodas, tea, and uh, now we're we're in. I don't know if we're supposed to pay to get in or not, but we're here. Well, there's the entrance. So yeah, this is not a big deal. This looks this is like a, it's like a public beach, whatever. So there's no cover to get in. We're fine. Fine. So this is where we're at, the Thousand and One Geckos restaurant. They make geckos a thousand and one ways, any way you want them. You want them fried, fricasseed, barbecued, grilled, but now it's just ten. <laughs> you can see some of the construction they're doing on this house. It's getting a little dark, so I'm not sure how well it's going to show up. But this is. As you can see, we're on one of the main highways. Oh, there we go. 1001 Geckos works a little better on this side. This is the restaurant we're just walking through. Look. We're a little off the beaten path. Actually, we're just really walking down the street. It's not really that. So we're just not really that adventurous. I mean, we need somebody. We need somebody to plug us into the Azerbaijani social pipeline. Because like this, it's like we don't know what we're doing. Walk up to us, and they were like, "Hey, Boska, Boska." Yeah, we don't. That's Russian. We don't. We don't speak Russian. I know. I know. Borvat is wrestle. Barietz, I think, is wrestler. Jordan. Crowd. Jordan wants to hang out with a Belgium crowd. <laughs> Jordan's ridiculous. But here's an aqua park. From the outside, it looked like they had some pretty cool water slides. I think as we get around this corner a little bit, we'll be able to see them. Anybody need a swimsuit? I could use a speedo. I got it. See, yeah, there's some water slides. Did they charge you to get in here? Probably. There's probably where they take admission. Keeping the cab clean. Nice. Found this pile of rocks. It's actually the Stonehenge of Azerbaijan. And it's not really as well organized as Stonehenge, but you can imagine how awesome this used to be before somebody pushed it over. Some bad tourists came over and wrecked their Azerbaijani Stonehenge. Shame on them. There's some red boats heading out towards that. Just along. I don't know if they're Coast Guard or if they're heading out to that rig. So we made it out to this lovely beach, plenty of bottles and trash. I mean I love the waves though, I can't, I just love the water coming in and out, it's nice. We got the oil rig in the background, this is so romantic. I think, I think I'm going to bring, I think I'm going to bring my wife here someday and uh, maybe I'll propose again in such a romantic setting, you know, you got rocks, and trash, and 
wire and rods coming out of the ground and oil rigs. Man, who wouldn't who wouldn't love that? Who would who wouldn't say yes to that if you're asking them to spend the rest of your life together? Really? How could anyone resist? I wish I was more of a romantic when I was younger. And I could show my wife all this beautiful stuff. Just one more shot of this rig because it's so lovely. Oh. It's a heartbreaker. Honey, this is for you. I dedicate this oil rig to you. If I owned it, we'd have so much money and I'd buy you some awesome jewelry. But we don't, so all you get is this crappy video. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I love you.